Good morning, Southwest Florida. Such a beautiful day here, and we're here at Regions Bank here in Fort Myers on Tamiami Trail, one of their headquarters. So happy that they were able to accommodate us and host Lee Pitts Live throughout this month. Have a wonderful show in store for you today, and I'm so excited about it. Get a chance to talk to Amy Zamont. She's the Director of Prevention and Community Services for McGregor Clinic. Also on the show, the Candle Man is back. Ronald Marshall will be here showing you how to get on to better health and life using those candles, a popular show. And in the last part of our show, we get a chance to talk to Lori Page, the Director of Foster Care for the Children's Network of Southwest Florida. She'll be joined by a foster parent, Lacey Chagnon. Uh, all that's happening right here. Keep it locked. We'll be right back. Southwest Florida, welcome back to Lee Pitts Live here at Regions Bank. Always a thrill to come out here. And of course, you can see Tamiami Trail 41, uh, what, 441 and all of that in the background here. So this is always so cool. And it's the, one of the cooler things is we get to talk to uh, Amy Zamont of McGregor Clinic, who's here to expose some knowledge on us about what's going on at McGregor Clinic. Amy, welcome to Lee Pitts Live. Thank you, thank you. Amy, there is a special month, or how, what, what is it called, that's coming up? Yes, June 27th is National HIV Testing Day, and it's a day where we recognize and normalize HIV testing throughout the community. Tell us how successful that has been in the past, HIV Testing Day. It has always been extremely successful. It's national. Um, it's national. It's actually a partnership between uh, we, uh, we Make the Change, um, uh, Walgreens, sorry, wait, wait okay. for a second, uh, Walgreens, Greater Than AIDS, and then McGregor Clinic gets involved here locally. And then there are other places around the nation that actually test at different Walgreens locations to be able to do testing. So much has changed in the last couple of years as it relates to HIV as a high priority in this area. Speak to that. Well, COVID kind of took over. Um, I would say it took over pretty much over everything uh, and it became everybody's focus. Mm -hmm. But part of our role is to remind people that HIV didn't step aside when COVID came to the scene. HIV is still out there. And as long as there is even one person acquiring HIV, it is still a priority. It is still something that kind of gives us an impetus to get out there and educate people and hopefully help people change behaviors so that they can reduce their risk. The whole chronic process of HIV now having, I think over the years you guys have told me that it's now moved to being like a chronic disease that people can live with for a lifetime. Yes. So now I have been enlightened with this word chronic, and I think I start hearing chronic too in the sense of COVID. It may be around in different forms for a lifetime. So do you think at some level COVID kind of helped people be more conscious of sanitation, conscious of just how you can catch things and just be more alert on getting help and getting educated in general, which helps out with people being more educated about uh, other diseases like HIV and AIDS? I think it could have. I think on some level, it kind of opens the door. It helps to ease conversation when we talk about risk reduction and safety, uh, and we're able to equate a lot of things when we're talking HIV to the COVID community. The, the challenge was there was so much politics around COVID. There was so much um, drama around COVID and people on either side of the fence with regard to vaccines and such that people still are leery of talking about health in general. So when you talk about things like PrEP, which is medication that you can take to prevent getting HIV, immediately people start feeling things because they're thinking about vaccines with COVID and where they stand on either side of the fence with that. So it's really been a challenge for us to draw the, the necessary parallels between HIV and COVID to be able to bring out those things that will help us further our cause to get people to understand that HIV is still a risk and that if they change certain behaviors, they can be safe from that, just like cer changing certain behaviors help them to be safer when it came to COVID. When we talk about uh, McGregor Clinic and its station here in Southwest Florida, what it does in Southwest Florida, how it should be viewed in Southwest Florida. How would you summarize McGregor Clinic to the community? 
I would say that we are all about the community. Our whole theme is giving voice to patient choice. So we're about allowing people to stand and be autonomous in their choices, stand and be autonomous in their behaviors. At the same time, we strive to be a center of excellence. Mm -hmm. So we want to provide the best care. We want to provide the best treatment. But we're not about treating a disease. We're about treating a person. Mm -hmm. And so it's a holistic approach. We want to do more for you than just give you that diagnosis and, and prescribe pills. We want to take care of the whole person. And so I, I would say our stance is we're a center of excellence in a community of excellence that is striving to achieve education at a level of excellence. Now we had your new CEO, Hammond. Uh, I don't want to say Tim or is it Tom? Tom, Tom All right, Hammond, Tom, yes. I, I, I didn't want to mess that up. Uh, we had Tom on the show a few months ago and he's coming in with a lot of enthusiasm and excitement about the new opportunity. Are you seeing any changes under the new CEO and how we're approaching the whole process here in, uh, in the area? So a lot of things he's actually moving forward with things that had already been planted. So one of the things that makes me very happy is that he's trying to expand the prevention department, really trying to position us, things take time, but really trying to position us to be able to expand the prevention services so that we can do things like prep directly for our clients, so that we can add on STI services directly for our clients. Of course, these things take planning, funding, strategic planning, board involvement, uh, but he's moving them forward, which is fantastic. He also has a heart for harm reduction and and so right now we're moving into the provision of naloxone for the community at large, not just for people that come to the clinic, but just like our community service building is open to people at large, we're be gonna begin providing naloxone services for people, uh, for the community at large, uh, providing uh, harm reduction education. Uh, and so it's moving us in new directions, but at the same time, taking our old direction and pulling it forward. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like we're growing, but not getting out of what, we're, what we do best. Mm -hmm. What was that, lock zone or Naloxone. So it's actually a um, medication that is given to somebody okay, who has overdosed. Okay, break that down for people. Just throw all these yes, big words around yes. here. So it's, well, it's actually very popular, but it, it, naloxone is... To whom? Is, I don't know about it. <laughs> well, naloxone is, is extremely uh, effective in reversing um, an overdose. So, you know, God forbid somebody has an overdose or lying okay. on the floor, That's naloxone actually about. prevents that. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, a whole hopefully. new direction. But, it, I mean, it's related because individuals who are substance users are often at risk for HIV. So it's tying into what we do, but it's just taking us to that next level. Mm -hmm. On June 27th, you talked about National HIV Testing Day. What should people do locally who want to be involved in that? Uh, they just come to McGregor Clinic. I know you guys also have a mobile uh, yes. testing unit. Just kind of yeah. push people towards uh, getting tested. Absolutely. So on that day, we're going to be at the Walgreens on 41 and Carroll Road uh, do, from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. with our mobile unit offering free rapid testing, which is the one minute test. You get your results even before you leave us. We're also going to have really? Walgreens is going to be there. Uh, it's going to be at their location. Greater Than AIDS has provided some uh, giveaways that we're going to be able to hand out to the community as incentives. Uh, we're also talking about having some of our uh, com community partners come out and offer things that they provide so that we can incentivize and normalize HIV testing. Our goal that day is to do 60 tests in that time span, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's actually a huge number of people that we can reach in, in an eight hour period. And so we're really excited about that. What people can do is show up, they're welcome to share the event live via via social media. Mm -hmm. uh, they can help us spread the word and, and tell others to show up. Uh, they're welcome to come and, and be a part of the event. Uh, if there are community partners like radio stations and all that that want to come out and play the music, they're welcome to join. There is no limit to how people can get involved. We want HIV testing to be as normal as, you know, I, I checked uh, my cholesterol and I checked my HIV status. I want people to know their status. And be proud that they got tested. You know, I don't know if you're going to yes. have the little stickers and all of that but i i mean i just I, I just keep going back to covid how people were posting i'm proud i got my covid test and when you use that word normalize yes. i hadn't thought about it you still don't see people proud yes. or posting or excited that hey i got my hi i i'm wondering if that's because people feel like hey if i post it i need to tell people what my results were that and they also, there's this assumption, it's a stigma around HIV testing. If you're getting tested for HIV, you must be doing something dirty. <laughs> you must be messing around. You know? And so we, we've got to get away from that. It's That's about knowing point. your status. It's about being healthy. Okay, so I'm looking at this date and I'll talk to you offline about seeing how I can get the television show out there, but I can't commit to that right now. But that's something that I think would be great if I could get the show out there. 
uh, 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 at our own local, own location yes, at that particular that'd be awesome. day. And I get my test while I'm there, and some people, you know, do it on air. That'd be awesome. All right, it's just a matter of um, it's a finger stick. It's just, a finger just stick. real simple. Yep, yeah. very simple. And then if people come, if they've discovered that they are HIV positive. It's, the sooner you know it, the better. So that's reality. Go. Absolutely. Absolutely. With the medications today, they can get you your immune system healthy back to where it was when you before you even got diagnosed. It, it's amazing. I can't tell you like a specific it's going to happen in 14 days, you know, mm -hmm. but I can tell you that it happens very quickly. The medications today are so simple. One pill once a day. We've even got FDA just approved a long term injectable for for people that are doing well. I mean, there's so many new innovations. It's not what it used to be. It is manageable. HIV is more manageable than diabetes. And really? I don't think people realize that. You know, diabetes is it's hard work and it's hit and miss. And we know what works with HIV and we're getting people healthy. And it just takes them stepping up and saying, I need to know my status. And once you know your status, if you're negative, we're going to help you stay negative. And if you're positive, we're going to get you linked to care immediately so that you can get what you need to stay healthy. Financially, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of your financial status in life, Yes. You can still get help. There is no financial excuse to get services. I mean, if you have the resources, if you have insurance, there's pretty much no insurance we don't take. So we're going to do that. Co-pays, deductibles, there are programs to assist with that if that's a challenge. Uh, if you have zero insurance, we have programs to help with that. If you're undocumented, we have programs to help with that. There is no reason why anybody should be afraid to know their status because we have help either way. As an ongoing uh, preventive uh, mechanism, should children like get tested? Well, actually, the CDC recommends all individuals ages 13 and up get tested at least once a year. Okay, but you just have to tell your doctor that, right? You got it. Okay. So, well, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. It's always a pleasure. And uh, congratulations on being a Lee Pitch Live. Yes. 2021. Yes. Person of the Year. Oh, my goodness. Sponsored by the North Law Firm. I am so proud of that. <laughs> Did Hugely you be, proud. Have you become famous since then and, 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 and all kinds of things falling from the sky? I have had so many people see the video and reach out. Hey, I saw you. Congratulations. It, it's just exciting. And it's people, a huge honor. People still talking about it. Yes, yes. Now let me bump you out. Absolutely. Congratulations. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. As the saying goes on this particular show, for those who say it can't be done, they're usually interrupted by those like Amy and all the fine people over there at McGregor Clinic. And, uh, of course, Miami has the oranges, but Fort Myers got the juice. We got the juice. We'll be right back. Lee Pitts Live is a Lee Pitts Enterprise production. Hello, everybody. This is Lee. I'm so glad that you watched that particular show. And if you enjoyed that show, we got other shows like that. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch Lee Pitts Live on demand anytime, and also hit us up on all our social media platforms. Just type in Lee Pitts Live, and there you go.